Good morning, girl. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You ready to chase the day? We have a beautiful morning here in Boston. We woke up around 8.30 and we're ready to catch the day. <laughs> Let's go, boys. <laughs> Getting her mom on the vlog, always hooking the boys up. <laughs> so this is what we made, guys. We're in a hotel. We don't want to spend much money on breakfast. Some oatmeal. Throw some hot water in there. Gluten-free. Top it with a little bit of cottage cheese. We're about to train in an hour and a half. You gotta let that food digest. You know, you guys know why we're eating oatmeal. Complex carbohydrate. Slow digesting will fuel us for our session. We'll put the stored glycogen in our liver and deliver it to us during our session. All right, bro, let's talk plan for the session. So, good warm up, good 10 to 15 minute warm up, get activated. Let it train, cut. You see, do it look ready? <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, after taking a lift to Harvard Stadium, we are ready to get the session underway. After a long 10 to 15 minute warm up, as it was freezing cold, we got into the session. Our first drill here is the icky shuffle. We're doing the icky shuffle in one box. As you guys have seen, we do a total of six sets of each pattern. The first three sets are slow, getting the rhythm, getting the technique down. Once we have that, we are moving absolutely as quickly as we can in and out of the box. This is a fantastic warm up for your brain and body to get that neurological connection between the brain and the body. Pattern two is in and out of the box, facing the ladder side on. As you guys see, we are incorporating the same work to rest ratio and the same method doing six sets where the last three sets are as quickly as we can. I really, really love these drills as they warm you up fantastically for the meat of the session. Pattern three is two feet in, two feet sideways, two feet back, two feet in, two feet sideways, two feet back. This is a very hard pattern and should be practiced very, very slowly before moving on to going as quickly as you can. I think you guys will really enjoy this one as it sure is challenging and it definitely is a fun one as well. After warming up the feet very very nicely with the ladder drills we move on to our ball work and incorporating the ball. We're still going with the same work to rest ratio 10 seconds on 10 seconds off six sets. We start with inside outside of both feet. First three sets getting technique getting the rhythm Last three sets, keeping that technique, keeping that rhythm, but moving at game speed as quickly as we can while keeping close precision and control of the football. This is one of my favorite drills to incorporate as well. The second exercise is figure eights. As always, still going with 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off but we are incorporating some cones. We do two sets with the right foot before moving on to two sets with the left foot, which is my weak foot, Crooney's strong foot. So you gotta always make sure to do both feet. I understand that it might be tough with the weak foot, but the only way that you get the weak foot as good as the strong foot is if you do the same amount of repetitions and sets with the weak foot or even more. The next pattern 
is the same thing. But we're going both feet, only using the outsides of our feet. As always, make sure you remain low to the ground, nice center of gravity, nice bend in the knees, so you can turn quickly and efficiently. The next exercise, same thing, but we're using the insides of our feet only, turning quickly in and around the cones in a figure eight pattern. You guys see, I threw my face warmer on because it sure was cold with the Swede. I guess he could last with that. Next, we move on to more explosive dribbling. So with this explosive dribbling, we are obviously trying to be as explosive as, and as game realistic as possible. The first skill slash exercise that we do is opening up with our right foot and stepping over the ball explosively and aggressively with our left foot. The next one we get into is opening up with our left foot, pulling back and opening those hips and stepping over the ball with our right foot. During our rest, we did some one touch passing. As you guys see during this one touch passing, we are trying to switch feet every single time and make sure we are concentrated and focused on our technique. Here is set two. And you guys might be wondering why I include two sets. I just want to show you the attention to detail that we pay to both sets. We make sure that both sets are as sharp as possible and that we are not losing any sharpness due to fatigue due to the session. We did another set of one touch passing weak foot only so I'm using my left Crony's using his right because those are our weak weak foots and it's just a great way to rest while keeping the heart rate high keeping yourself going the next exercise we get into is a left footed scissor followed by a right footed Cruyff this move is an excellent one because it is super game realistic. We then move on to a right footed scissor with a left footed Cruyff. As always, remaining as sharp as possible. We do a third set of weak foot one touch passing while remaining as sharp as possible on our toes keeping the heart rate going, keeping the concentration high. And as always, if you make a mistake, you keep going. If the pass isn't perfect, you keep going. We do another set, and as you guys see, not perfect. Screwed up a couple times there. But the whole idea is to be as explosive as possible with these moves and make them as game realistic as possible by being aggressive with the scissor aggressive with the outside touch and aggressive with the Cruyff. And here's our fourth set of weak foot one touch passing. As you guys see, it has gotten sharper over time, not weaker over time, because we are still concentrated, remaining sharp and even more warmed up. So we took another bit of a rest from the explosive dribbling and we moved on to weak foot two touch passing. Also a great drill to do during your rest time to remain sharp during fatigue. And as you guys see, not every touch is going to be perfect, but you're striving for perfection. When you strive for, for perfection, you will get excellence. So the whole idea is to ping it in at a good pace to our partner so he has to take a good touch and play it back. We get back into our explosive dribbling with a right foot pull and open up with a pull back, a sole pull back and behind body touch to reset us and get us back into the explosive portion of the dribble. Next we obviously move on to our left foot. So you're pulling and opening up with the 
left foot with the inside portion of your foot and you are pulling back with your left foot to reset you. Here's our sixth set of passing and we're still going weak foot one touch, trying to ping it in at good pace and challenge our partner's touch. As I've said, it's a great rest, good way to keep you sharp during your rest and focus on your technique while under extreme load and fatigue from the explosive dribbling. Seventh set of passing, we go into strong foot, two-touch passing. So I'm going right foot, Cooney's going left foot, still remaining on the toes, trying to remain as sharp, as concentrated, and as focused as possible while challenging each, other, each other's touch. We go on to our second set of our pull back and open up, and our pull behind body touch to reset us for the next rep of our explosive dribble. Set two of our left foot pull and open up and our pull back. And this obviously has to improve for me. It has to be more explosive on the left foot. I can make an excuse and say it's my weak foot, but my whole goal is to make my weak foot as good or better than my strong foot. Ambidextrous Dexterity is very, very important in the game of football and is a very, very underlooked skill, especially at a younger age. It should be challenged and often worked on so when you get to the higher levels, your weak foot can't even be noticed. So now we're going on to a left foot pull and open up with a Cruyff, still trying to remain sharp and explosive. Next we go on to slalom dribbling, which is a very good exercise, challenges your speed dribbling, challenges your directional touches, the sharpness of your cuts, and it's obviously very tough on your fitness and cardiovascular base and will improve it over time. The whole goal of this first exercise is to cut sharply around the cone with the outside of your foot while remaining at speed. As you guys see, if you screw up, it's not a big deal. You get back to the start and you start over. The next drill we get into is a roll to inside to outside. So we keep our foot in the air the entire time while shifting our body weight. <laughs> As you guys see, if you screw up, it's not a big deal. All you gotta do is go back to the start, start over, and make sure the next set is quality. Don't stress it, don't dwell about it, get on with it, and get after it. I really love this one because it's nice and rhythmic. And you have to shift your body weight really nicely. So we were just going back and forth. We did about four reps of each pattern and about two sets of that, which really try to challenge the fitness very nicely. On this set, I'm trying to go quicker, more at game speed. Yeah. As the first set was more about getting the technique and the rhythm down, now I'm going more speed, more aggressiveness, and trying to make it as game realistic as possible as I'm escaping a defender and accelerating away. And that's the goal of these drills. Thank you.
The next pattern we get into is a roll behind the body to an outside touch. This is one of my favorite patterns as when you get into it, it really gets nice, it flows nice, it's super rhythmic. You really got to focus on your technique and it's a good way to escape and evade your opponent and accelerate away. I first started using one touch, but my man Crooney said it'd probably be more useful to go two touch on it so you can really focus on that pull back and behind the body touch. So here is another pattern that I really like. It's definitely a difficult one as you have to open your hips very nicely. You have to have that hip mobility to open up like this. So you're opening up with the sole of your foot, touching it with the inside, like you're escaping and evading a defender. You wanna be explosive and you wanna be aggressive. How was the session, girl? Then I introduced some heading to Mr. Freelander here. I hate heading, bro. <laughs> Why is heading important though? You think you think heading is important? I think it's very important because first of all, there's not so many football players that are good at it. Yeah. And they never train it. So if you can train it and get better, good on it, you will have like a lot of big advantage. Of course. If you compare it to others and always, it's good in every part of the field. Long balls in the middle of the field corners, yeah. free kicks, it can change the game. Of course. So that's why I think that's underrated skill. Uh, where are we headed now? Heading to eat some good uh, healthy food and prepare for the session number two. Love that, boy! We'll dig in for the boys. Vibes. <sighs> dig in for the boys. Most workout meal for the boys. You ready for the second session? I'm, uh, I mean, right now I'm uh, chilling, but it's a mindset. Of course, bro. It's a mindset thing. Right. Right. Second session. Ready to go. Second session. When we out to dinner, get some seafood in. The move. We came back, we grabbed a bite, we both took baths, we both took showers, chilled for a little bit, got some work done, now we're off to the second session. There is no trick guys, it's hard work, good planning, and getting it in. Keep that mindset positive, let's get after it. So for our second session of the day, we started off with our primary total body power and total body strength exercise, the barbell deadlift. We did five sets of five reps while keeping our technique very sharp. The second exercise we moved on to is a very good posterior chain exercise, glute and hamstring. It is a two-legged bridge up and a one-legged bridge down. The whole goal of this exercise is to go as slowly as possible on that downward eccentric phase. That downward eccentric phase is very, very essential to injury prevention. Third exercise with just a simple one leg balance on the blue pad to keep ourselves activated. This exercise is really good as it incorporates the core and the small proprioceptor muscles of the ankle, knee, and hip joint. For our second complex, we moved on to a single leg barbell Romanian deadlift. This exercise is very good for the glutes and the hamstrings as well as your single leg balance. Second exercise in the complex was a rear foot elevated split squat. And this is one of my favorite exercises as you guys have seen this many times. I'm trying my best to move up and down vertically and not let that knee come over the ankle. 
we also had included another core exercise, which I did not show, unfortunately. But we move on to our third complex and our last complex of the day. And I started off with those slide boards, which is a very tough exercise. The next exercise in this complex was a barbell lateral lunge. And you guys see, I'm not going heavy weight. I'm just making, for, making sure that my form is proper, my form is correct. I'm using the right muscles, activating the right muscles. Cooney's first Chipotle experience. Sure that I don't feel Let's get any pain. Last meal of the day for the boys. A little bit of chicken, sweet potato, greens, beets, farro. Got my hot sauce. The boy Cooney is on some Chipotle, and we're watching the MLS Cup. How's the Chipotle, brother? Amazing. Unreal, bro. What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm going to end the vlog here. Me and the homie, we're going to go out, enjoy a little bit, check out the town, check out Boston, meet up with some friends. Hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. We enjoyed the day. I'm going to keep bringing you guys some excellent content. Please like the video. Please share. Please subscribe. I really appreciate it. See you guys in the next vlog.